This is uh, the topic of today, how I collected a data set with 5,000 images of Qualtas. A few words about me first. So I work as a principal data scientist at OLX and also as a hobby, um, I run Data Talks Club, which is a community of people who love data. So if you don't know OLX, uh, check it out. It's uh, quite a big company present in many uh, markets. So we are online marketplace. And actually some of the things I will talk about here um, are a bit related. So I will talk about collecting images of clothes. This, and you might ask, why didn't I take these images from OLX? And the reason is simple. I will talk a bit about that later, but let me first give you a bit of context. So first of all, I will tell you why I needed to collect a, a data set with pictures. And then I will discuss possible options, like how actually I went around collecting this and uh, what are the, the problems that I faced and how I spent time actually annotating these images. And yeah, finally, how you can access the results. And the main reason I was doing this, I was collecting data set is because I was writing a book. So the book is called Machine Learning Book Camp. And I needed a data set for the chapter about deep learning. So in deep learning, usually we deal with images and um, yeah, I needed to find a data set that I can use for this chapter about deep learning. So I wanted to do image classification, something pretty basic so people would understand. And I thought, okay, which data set I could use? And usually most of the books use this data set, MNIST, with handwritten digits. So this is such a common data set, probably uh, like every second article on the internet talks about this. Most of the books have it, and it's quite unrealistic data set. So this is not something you see in real life. So you don't see 10 by 10 pictures, or was it 16 by 16? Or I, I don't remember, but these are very tiny images. So this is very far from real life, right? So this wasn't suitable for the book. Then there is an alternative to Minist called Fashion Minist, which is a very good um, data set. But again, it has the same problem. It's very tiny, all the images are small. So it's good for learning, uh, for building a very basic models. But this is quite far from what we data scientists do at work, right? So I thought, okay, what else is there? So I went to Kaggle and usually this is the first place I check when I need a data set. So on Kaggle, there are quite a lot of data sets. So of course there was a competition, uh, docs versus cats. Um, so you have a bunch of cats, a bunch of dogs, and then you need to build a classifier that tells one apart from the others. It's also a pretty common data set, pretty boring, I would say. Um, and again, in real life, maybe you don't always, you don't often build a classifier for these kind of tasks, right? So I wanted to have something less common, more interesting and more real life. And then hot dog uh, or not hot dog is yet another example of uh, this is a funny thing of course uh, for those maybe who watched uh, a tv show silicon valley there was uh, a person who came up with a problem like predicting if there is a picture of a hot dog or not yeah. but yeah like it's also hmm, quite common i would say right then i found this data set clothings uh, from scraped from zalanda zalanda is a big e-commerce company in europe and uh, yeah, so this uh, person, Dominic, they scraped data from Zalanda and made it available. And if you check license, so the license, is, of course, images belong to Zalanda, so they are scraped. So maybe you can use it for your personal pet projects, but I wanted to use it for a book. A book is a commercial thing, something I want to sell, right? And also, there I was going to print the actual images of the data set in the book itself. So of course, scraping images from, scraped images from Zalanda was not an option, right? The moment lawyers from Zalanda see this, my book is, uh, you know, like not the best situation, right? But this idea of using e-commerce images, clothing images, I really liked it. And I thought, okay, maybe there is an open data set with that. So I found another one, um, like this fashion product images data set, but I wasn't sure what kind of license they have. And uh, yeah, it also looked great to me. So I, I, I didn't know. 
yeah so there was a question from somebody uh, on Kaggle like what is the license so I needed to make sure that the, this actually allows using for the data set for commercial purposes and it wasn't clear if I can use this um, yeah there are other data sets so for example this data set from Avita Avita is a big um, online classifieds company and they hosted competitions also on Kaggle and technically I could use this, but again, the license didn't allow this. So the, the license for the competition allowed to use images or any data set from this competition only for taking part in the competition, not outside of the competition, and of course, not for commercial purposes. Yeah, this is basically a part from that, uh, from the rules. Um, so as I said at the beginning, I work at OLX and OLX is a company for with online classifieds. So in principle, I could take the data from the website and use it. But uh, yeah, this is, again, I would need to talk to lawyers, to spend a lot of time talking to lawyers and figuring out which images could be taken, which images could not. Our license agreement does not allow just to take image and use it for arbitrary things. So in order to open source a data set from OLX, I would need to go through a very lengthy and bureaucratic process right so this is something i this is a good idea but i didn't like um, uh, what it involves so i abandoned this idea and i thought okay like if i cannot find a data set myself or i i couldn't use a data set from oilix what if i just collect a data set myself sounds like a good idea so this is what i ended up doing so now i'll tell you more about that so First of all, the first thing I did is I looked at my wardrobe, or not only my personal one, also wardrobe from my wife, like all the clothes from my wife, my son, and we took a lot of pictures. It was already like a couple of uh, hundred pictures. That was not enough, uh, of course, uh, for building the model, but this was good as, a good start, right? So this was the first start. But then I, then I thought, how can we get more? And then, yeah, uh, the obvious choice was to check crowdsourcing platforms. So I've been a user of Amazon Mechanical Turk for quite some time. So this was the first option I decided to go with. And actually, if you ever try to create a task in Mechanical Turk for uploading something, then it's not super easy, right? So the like you can see on this slide that uh, like the this file upload answer element is not um, officially supported. And in order to have this functionality to let uh, workers on Mechanical Turk upload something, I needed to go through this long, long, long tutorial. And I gave up like on somewhere here, only like 33%. I realized that uh, this is just too much effort. I don't know if I am what I'm doing is working, what am I doing, it's not clear at all. So I gave up. It's just too complex. I thought hmm, maybe there is something else. And I've heard about Taloka. So I was doing this more than one year ago. So I wanted so I decided to give it a try. And unlike Mechanical Turk, actually there is a way to just create an output data type, which is a file. So then out of the box, instead of going through this, I could have like a form where people would upload a file. This is what I needed. So I just decided to go with this. I created a task. I asked people to upload it, to upload images of their clothes um, and then gave some description. And then I specified what kind of clothes, clothes I needed. And yeah, one important thing here, I, uh, set this field, like when creating uh, the task of not accepting the responses automatically. Um, you will later see, but people, the, the, the lockers, the workers would upload any sort of stuff. Not all of these are good images. So that's why it's important to not automatically accept them. And yeah, I think this is not super relevant. This is just because it doesn't require, like in Taloka, it doesn't require me to provide any the form doesn't have any input so i just needed to upload some input in order to create 100 tasks so i would just create like a simple um uh, this uh, like tsv file with 100 rows 
in order to get 100 images. And this is how the result looked like. And once I started getting the results, I realized that many of the things are, um, you know, not what I need. So I needed to build some sort of quality control. Think on top of the results I get. So I used API uh, from Taloka. And then this is something I did in Jupyter. So in Jupyter, I created widgets with buttons. So I displayed the actual image, something that I get from Taloka and then buttons. Okay, accept, it's good. And if I press on any of the other buttons, then I reject the thing. And some of the rejected things, uh, some of them I just reject the, the image, not the worker. But in some cases, like somebody uploaded the screenshot or um, like somebody, uh, I don't know, uh, uploaded a duplicate. In some cases, I would just ban the locker outright. So usually, like when it's not, when it's a screenshot, uh, then I would just ban them immediately. And then, yeah, this is the kind of stuff many people uploaded. So this is a good one, but sometimes it was just, you know, black square, right? And uh, that was one of the problem, like items that are not, re not related. So of course, that's why I needed to go through them manually and verify that all of them are what I need. Of course, I could maybe use uh, like other two lockers to check that, but I thought it's simpler if I just check this. And another problem is uh, I couldn't find an easy automated way of checking this is sometimes people would upload again because I wanted to use it for the book. I didn't I didn't want people to just randomly upload stuff from the internet, right? So something that they would take, I don't know, from Zalanda, upload this and uh, get money, right? So I needed for each image I needed to check if it is genuine, if it's not copied from somewhere. So for that I used this uh, in Google Chrome function search Google for images and I needed to do it for every image, right? And yeah, in this case, this is actually a genuine image, right? So I don't see the same one anywhere. Now this looks close, but it's not the same. Right? But sometimes uh, there were cases when it was actually like an image like that. And then I could immediately see that, uh, well, just looking by on this image, you can already guess that it might be a stock image scraped from somewhere. But yeah, here's a proof that this is actually scraped. And then when I see something like this, I would just ban the executors, the talker. And when I see something like that, of course, I got a lot of stuff like that. So some people would just take one picture that is completely irrelevant and would upload it many, many, many times. And it was very important for me to catch them as soon as possible. So I just start uh, a task, like a pool of tasks, and then people would jump in and start uploading garbage. So I needed to block them when they start. So then the rest of the pool, the rest of the tax tasks in the pool are done by people who are who are uploading good stuff, not like some random stuff. And that was also a part of the learning like that I needed. Like I open a pool, then a lot of garbage um, floats, floats in. I stop this, I ban the people, and then the rest of the people who are there, who are uploading their clothes, they keep on until somebody else decides to, you know, take advantage of this. And yeah, so every time I press on this button, like a, a rejection code, you know, like some rejection reason is uh, generated. So there are some rejection reasons, but so people know what exactly, why I'm rejecting this image. So, and with that, I found out that Taloka is a good way of getting images quite cheaply, but it requires a lot of moderation. So I needed to have some sort of process and it wasn't easy to come up with this process. So it required time. But the images I get, uh, I was getting the good images, they were quite good. Other option I tried to do is just ask my network. So I just created an article on Medium saying, hey, can you please take your own images and upload them? And a lot of people also responded positively with this. Yeah, I just posted this on, uh, on LinkedIn and uh, got quite a lot of uh, images, very good response. So this was, of course, like also a viable option, but I didn't get a lot of images this way. 
so most of the images eventually came from Toloka and uh, yeah the other thing so when doing this when asking the community when asking the uh, people to help me uh, one company also I guess they decided to to reach out to me and help they offered help and they gave me some images as well uh, it's more expensive than Toloka it requires less moderation so like uh, there are pros and cons okay so this way I collected around uh, it was actually more than 5,000 images around 6,000 and then I needed to annotate them so um, maybe I should have designed the process better like when you use Toloka right I should have designed process better so people would give me good labels but I didn't so I needed to label this data somehow and I thought okay should I just use Toloka and ask them for labeling or not and I thought okay I'll just label them myself so myself it's not a lot of images so let me just go through this and uh, you know quickly do this so I did this again in Jupyter Notebooks widgets in Jupyter Notebook are very cool so I in retrospect I should have used crowdsourcing platform because it would save me a lot of time so next time I do this labeling I would just go with crowdsourcing and then one thing I noticed when doing this is even though I was doing labeling myself I still couldn't trust the quality of these labels so I made a lot of mistakes and I want to show you uh, a little trick I tell you a bit a little uh, tell you about a little trick that helped me save time maybe it will be helpful for you I've, I'm pretty sure it is also helpful for crowdsourcing platforms is the trick is the following so you get a bunch of images in this case like 5000 and you train a model you train a neural network for classifying the images and you set a very high learning rate and then you train your model only for one or two epochs so you try to a bit overfit right not too much but a little bit and then you take the model you just trained and you apply to all the images you just trained on right so you train on 5000 images and then you apply this model to these 5000 images right and then the network will make mistakes in some cases and usually the images where the network makes mistakes are labeling mistakes right so it's not the network that makes mistakes it's the labels that are incorrect right? and this way I was able to clean the, the labels of the data um, and it's reasonably straightforward it didn't take me a lot of time to implement, implement. Um, yeah so it's actually Mm. I'm finishing, uh, almost finishing the talk, so I just want to sort of summarize before moving on. Um, so when you use crowdsourcing platforms, um, so the way I approached it with the Loka, you know, with Amazon uh, Mechanical Turk probably it works also. So first I designed the, the form using UI, but then most of the time I used actually API to interact with uh, the crowdsourcing platform get the data, ban users, uh, approve, reject, and all these things. Right? It's very convenient, it didn't take me a lot of time to learn. Um, so, and then widgets in IPython are really pow powerful, so I could just do everything without leaving my Jupyter Notebook. And then the important thing that I learned is, I told you this two times, I'll tell you this third time, is when you start a pool of tasks, it's important to ban the users who misbehave, who upload different random stuff, because uh, most of the users are good, but there are a bunch of users, like maybe, I don't know, a few percent, who uh, upload garbage, and it's important to ban them as soon as possible so they don't contaminate your data set because you will need to clean that afterwards. So you start a pool, people start you know, creating bad stuff, you ban them, and then only good uh, remain and upload good stuff. So uh, just final, Two final words is uh, this this data set is available on Kaggle so you can find this on Kaggle you just can I don't know Google this clothing data set on Kaggle you will find it and you can take a screenshot or I'll share the links this is how you can access this and then yeah maybe yeah check my book it's cool one and this is how you can contact me if you have any questions after the talk